Now I'm sure that I'm quite late to the party, but can we just take a second and talk about mermaid shrines and treasuries? As some of you might know, I'm still fairly new to the seas, but isn't it a little crazy that we are given the opportunity to safely stash away our loot in an environment that emphasizes stealing loot? Listen, I'm all about the tools not rules mindset, and naturally a good pirate has to use every tool in the arsenal to succeed. But something about this just doesn't feel right. When another ship runs away from me, then I don't blame them for doing the running, I blame myself for failing to stop them. But if if I sink them and I still can't get my hands on their loot because it is stashed away with a mermaid, that just kind of feels cheesy. But is it actually as big of a deal as I believe, or am I making a mountain out of a molehill? Sure, the loot is safe as long as you don't pick it up, but to be able to sell it, you do have to pick it up eventually. And lord knows that those are the times that you have to defend it. I suppose the best way to find out how useful the strategy of mermaid stashing truly is will be by trying to do it myself. So I guess all there's left to say is take a deep breath, make yourself familiar with the bottom of the ocean, and get ready for another chapter chapter of the Sea of Tales. Now, if you are not aware of how shrines and treasuries function, don't worry, it's very simple. You find designated spots on the seas that are marked not only on the map, but also with a purple glow on the ocean surface. From there, all you have to do is dive down and find the entrance in order to take on that shrine or treasury. Shrines are home to a variety of different puzzles, which upon completion, reward you with a bunch of loot. Naturally, I don't want to take the joy of solving these puzzles away from you, but rest assured knowing that I completed them using only my own wits and definitely did not reach out to have somebody else tell me me the solution ahead of time. But Cliff, how do I get all these items back to the surface? Worry not, my friend, because that's what mermaid statues are for. They will hold onto your loot for you and send you back to your ship whenever you want. And once you've arrived at the surface, a mermaid will spawn to offer you the riches that you have uncovered. Which is where it gets kind of cheesy, because if you never claim your loot, they will just hold onto it indefinitely. I think you are starting to see where I'm going with this. Instead of taking my loot, I set sail to do it all over again somewhere else. Having to sail through the storm to achieve that was definitely a bit inconvenient convenient, but for the next step of my plan, I was targeting a mermaid treasury. Now, unlike shrines, treasuries all appear to be functionally the same, at least the ones that I've been to. The chamber will periodically fill with water to present a variety of different enemies in waves. Once you have defeated all these enemies, the vault will open and all the loot is yours to keep, again utilizing the mermaid statues as your means of transport. At this point, I was fully expecting that somebody would either come to sink my ship or had already snuck onto it while I was gone, and the whole point of not picking up the loot is that if I was to sink, it wouldn't have mattered. But as much as there had been a bunch of ships on the sea, none of them seemed to have the intention of attacking me. If you're trying to do this and you're just like me, solo slooping, there's really no reason for you to engage in combat if you can avoid it. But when I spotted an emissary sloop not too far away from my next shrine, I figured that I might as well try to sink them just to be sure they don't mess with me while I'm underwater. I mean, I had nothing to lose, so let the fight begin. Those of you who know me also know that I'm not exactly a PvP lord. God knows that if these guys were any more competent than that, there's no way I'd come out victorious, but hey, I take wins where I can get them. While the two of them were taking a forced vacation on the Ferry of the Damned, I was trying to go for the big brain play of taking away their supplies to make sure they could no longer fight me. But when I went to stash away the goods, I realized, right, I let my ship sink to do this. And this is where the whole system of mermaids holding onto my loot felt weird. Let's assume for a second that I was not complete garbage at PvP and managed to sink them without losing my own ship. If successful, I'd get my hands on all the loot they acquired as well as their emissary flag. But what do they get for having sunk my vessel? Absolutely nothing. The cherry on top was that I landed on Lone Cove, which was just south of the next shrine. Surprisingly, the pieces were falling into my lap and I could continue to go about my business. I mean, sure, the storm refused to leave me alone, so I had to wait for that to pass. But besides that, everything was going swimmingly. I decided to go for one more treasury before initiating the final part of my plan. Of course, I could have just gone and collected the treasury, but because I 
was trying to maximize my profits, the only right move here was to raise an emissary flag. And because the loot you get from the mermaids greatly varies, the best way to maximize my profit was to go for the reaper flag. I stocked up on some supplies, fully expecting to get into combat with that target on my back, before once again running away from the storm to begin collecting the pieces. By the way, these mermaids have a tendency of disappearing if your ship gets too close. I would suggest approaching them with your vessel a ways away to ensure that doesn't happen. From there on out, the process was quite straightforward. I sailed from shrine to treasury and treasury to shrine to collect all the items that the mermaids were holding on for me. At this point it is worth mentioning that there appears to be a level of randomness when it comes to what you can find in these vaults. A lot of the treasure I found today was not actually present the first time around, and especially the shrines have been extremely hit or miss for me when it came to profitability. Speaking of things that are profitable, a fort of fortune that manifested just after I was halfway through my trip. Those of you who watched my Chasers episode might know that a FAF can be a great way to sneakily get some voyages done while everyone else is fighting over it. I mean, I was still getting attacked regardless, but hey, doesn't mean it won't help me this time, right? Though it was a bit weird to see two sloops fight around a fort, which wasn't actually the fort of fortune. I wasn't gonna rely on a false sense of security again, I made the decision that I had to expedite the process. Just for once during this voyage, the storm was actually working in my favor as it blocked the path between my vessel and the ones currently fighting. But I was on borrowed time, all it took was for the fight to die down so that I could take a gander at the map. I unloaded the precious cargo I collected with a measly rank 3 emissary flag, and I'm sure that many of you fellow solo supers out there know the pain that is selling a whole bunch of loot on your lonesome. Especially the small trinkets and stuff, that just takes forever. As I was walking back and forth with the loot I acquired, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread wash over me. It wasn't that I was afraid of getting attacked, more than hoping for it. It didn't feel right to sail under the flag of the Reaper without engaging in combat. All this treasure I had acquired was free of the blood of my foes, making all this profit feel hollow. Sure, I walked away with about 150,000 more gold pieces in my pocket than I started with, but at what cost? I had forgotten my roots and spit on my own legacy. Before I hit PL, we executed pirates that had the audacity to run away with a Reaper emissary flag atop their ship. I mean, sure, I didn't run away from anybody because nobody was trying to fight me, but how was avoiding combat altogether any better? I knew that I had to make this right. I set sail once again and headed straight towards the Ford of Fortune. I was either going to earn the money in my pockets or go down in a blaze of glory whilst delivering my emissary flag to a crew that respected the reapers. I don't usually attack ships bigger than my own while solo slooping, but this was a matter of principle. Whoever was on that vessel would be my opponents now and I had no intention of backing down. As I boarded that ship, I was surprised to find out that its crew was currently not on board. They had plenty of supplies I could steal, however, and if they were to return, they'd find a galleon engulfed in flames. And with these flames, I had created a beacon, one that attracted other vessels on the sea, this was it. I would either fight honor in combat or die trying.
At last, I had gotten what I wanted, a glorious death delivered through the hands of a reaper. And that's the end of the story! If you are a solo pirate and you don't have a ton of time to sail, going for the occasional mermaid stash might be an option. You are free to spend your time however you please. But to me, this was dirty money in my hands, coins that did not feel earned, and frankly speaking, were a bit tedious to acquire. And personally, I do not feel comfortable raising the reaper emissary flag just to complete PvE content. Though if you are interested in seeing my greatest loot haul to date, what about you check out my last episode? in which I did everything in my power to make the most out of Community Day. You can find the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea and until next time, peace.